Well, the wind and rain did not keep the crowds away from cenotaphs up and down Vancouver Island from coast to coast to coast. Canadians, young and old, took the time to pay tribute to those who fought and died for our country. Ceremonies were held across Canada, around the world, as veterans and their families stood silently at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month to mark the symbolic end of the First World War. Louise Hartland reports. Quadrant, aye. Hundreds of people gather to honor the thousands who have given for our freedom. Silence for those gone too soon. This was my dad. A time to remember. Kathleen Craig served in the Battle of Britain. It means everything. In fact, as I say, I wasn't coming. I thought, I have to go. It means so much to me. The importance of their sacrifice is not lost in the crowd, with families bringing young people to honor great-grandparents, some they never knew. As we live in uh, a beautiful country, uh, we take freedom sometimes, a lot of the time, actually for granted, and I want them to be able to remember what uh, our fathers, grandfathers have actually done so we can live here. We'd like people to remember, and it's very rewarding to us that uh, we get a turnout as large as we do here. The Lieutenant Governor of British Columbia, His Honour, the Honourable Stephen Point. Dignitaries laying wreaths to pay respect to the dead. For the third year in a row, Sheila Fines is the Silver Cross mother, laying a wreath in memory of her son, Corporal Stuart Langridge, who developed post-traumatic stress disorder and took his own life after returning from Afghanistan. It's really important to remember all, all of the veterans, um, the young and the old, and I think it's really nice to see people turn out, and there's that moment when, you know, people are just thinking the right thing. For a short period of time. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's great! That's beautiful! Lane Makota wears 158 poppies. It's one for every soldier we've lost in Afghanistan since 2002. Today is a remembrance of the thousands who have died over the decades and a chance to share stories of those lost and find comfort in those who understand. They should never be forgotten. History goes on, and the sacrifices we have to, they endured should never be forgotten. The horrors they saw should never be forgotten. Lest we forget. We will remember them. Louise Hartland, CTV News, Victoria. Despite our pledge to never forget, the heroic efforts of thousands of Canadians who fought to make the world a better place have become buried under the weight of time. As years, decades and generations pass, the stories of their incredible, heart-pounding missions may become lost. That was in danger of happening to a Victoria man whose bravery in the First World War earned him the British Empire's highest war honour. But thanks to a local historian, the unlikely story of Lieutenant Commander Roland Burke lives on. It was seven years ago Bart Armstrong first visited Royal Oak Burial Park and noticed one veteran's grave was bare. I noticed there were a whole bunch of wonderful little white crosses. And, and, and so I thought, wow, isn't that neat? The cemetery's doing that. And I come down here and there wasn't one. He uh, brought it to the attention that it was actually kind of uh, floundering. He had a small headstone, uh, there was no activity. And be just the way Lieutenant Commander Roland Burke would have wanted it. He was a quiet, modest man, but also a hero, worthy of the Victoria Cross. It is the highest medal that you can get, and, and it's, it's incredible bravery involved. Burke didn't seem like the type. Not only was he shy, he couldn't see very well after an explosion on his farm in Nelson, B.C., but he lived to serve. The Canadian Navy wouldn't take him because of his eyesight. So um, he paid his own passage to England and the Royal Navy took him. In early 1918, in the Belgian Channel, Burke volunteered to command an 80-foot rescue boat. He helped save more than 40 lives. He jumped into a, a 
big lifeboat and zoomed out into a, a war, a full-blown war, and uh, had 50-something uh, holes from bullets and shells in his boat when he was done. Two of his small crew were killed, yet Burke returned repeatedly under heavy fire to respond to people crying out in the water. In the words of the Admiral commanding, Burke was the bravest of all holders of the Victoria Cross. He immigrated to Canada. Every year on Remembrance Day, since first being contacted by historian Bart Armstrong, sailors from HMCS Malahat hold a small ceremony for Lieutenant Commander Roland Burke. The freedoms that we have didn't come at the end of a pen. They came at the end of a rifle. And they came at the end of this man's rifle. And, and, and thousands like him. And, and, and if we can't stop for 10 minutes and show a little bit of respect for them, then we, we have a personal problem. Burke, who later settled in Victoria, had a perfectly reasonable explanation for his incredible story of bravery and survival. He used to say he won the Victoria Cross because he couldn't see well enough to get out of the way. Remembrance Day ceremonies were held up and down Vancouver Island today. In Nanaimo, hundreds of people lined the streets to take part in the service at the Cenotaph, including the crew of the Harbour City's namesake, HMCS Nanaimo. CTV's Scott Cunningham reports. It's morning in Nanaimo Harbor, and already a naval ship that bears the city's name has come to port. Doubled up on one! Tying down the mid-sized warship, the vessel's crew get their first taste of land in 10 days. The mission, patrolling the Pacific coast. This is the modern-day use for the ship, but older incarnations served in the Second World War and received battle honors. For us to be here in our namesake city, representing the current ship as well as our, our original namesake ship, is a, quite an honor. This is what brought the naval ship home. The 11th day, the 11th month, on the 11th hour. Hundreds packed Nanaimo streets to pay their respects to Canadian service men and women. When smoke settles on the Remembrance Day ceremony, one of the greatest honors was bestowed to the captain of the Nanaimo, a rare acknowledgement for a woman, and one the captain is not comfortable taking praise for. It's fantastic, but really it's no different from anyone else. The faces of Nanaimo's military, both young and old, easily depict how important Remembrance Day is here, and having a ship to represent the city only underlines how grateful they are for their past and present. It's it's a proud tradition to keep on the name, and uh, we're so proud of, of this ship. We're so proud of, of the officers and men who sail in her, and uh, we're so pleased they're here to be with us today. Congratulating his captain, Chief Petty Officer, Second Class, Bill Scott doesn't forget his crew. No longer is the ship called to sail to foreign shores, but the patrol missions they run are key in keeping Canada's ocean borders secure. It's a smaller vessel, so it may not be as sexy, but uh, 10 days on a smaller vessel can seem like a lot longer sometimes, so they were particularly enthusiastic to come in and have Remembrance Day after that sort of time at sea in the Nanaimo, the namesake like city. Captain and crew will get a night off in the city the ship was named after, but the rest is brief as they are back to sea early Saturday morning for another patrol. Scott Cunningham, CTV News, Nanaimo. And poppies filled Parksville. Hundreds of people gathered this morning at the city cenotaph to celebrate Remembrance Day. At 11 o'clock, a moment of silence was held to honor those who fought and served our country. RCMP officers laid wreaths while saluting the memorial. The Parksville Legion says it's important we don't forget the sacrifices veterans make. The time that's involved with the men and women that go and leave their homes to look after Canada's safety and, and security, it's amazing to see them. Uh, they, they don't begrudge it. They're there, they have a duty to perform, and they're more than happy to do it. They do it, they come home and return to their families. And, and when you see it firsthand, it's just amazing. Great mark! Time! Close it up. Just close it up. In the Comox Valley, generations of soldiers marched at Remembrance Day commemorations. Veterans from earlier wars were joined by current members of the Canadian Forces from CFB Comox. Many of them veterans of the war in Afghanistan and more recently Libya. The RCMP was also represented and there was even a fly past from one of the search and rescue Cormorant helicopters. Families are getting the chance to take a trip back in military time at the Royal BC Museum. Veterans Week celebrations honor those who have served our country and show off memorabilia of wars dating back to the First World War. But people are also getting a very real taste of present conflicts from the mouths of veterans. CTV's Cheryl Bloxham reports. Okay, ready and 
A snapshot showing the future meeting the past. I think it's a really neat experience. A group of elementary school children wearing military gear in a Korean military Jeep. I never really felt uh, going in a Jeep like this. It's pretty cool to wear history and to be in this Jeep. It's part of the Royal BC Museum's Veterans Week exhibit. Five days of free talks, activities and displays to honour those who have served and those who continue to serve. One of the things that I think is this is a touchstone for families to come here, to have conversations, to kind of spark memories of past service. <laughs> Displays include a collection of trench art made by soldiers, some dating back to the First World War, military artifact collections, and even a replica of the National War Memorial in Ottawa, including the tomb of the unknown soldier. I think this is really cool. My dad was in the military. He was in the Cold War, and I think this is pretty cool to see all the old artifacts that are here. Learn more about what war is really like and that it's not how video games display it. And perhaps the most invaluable opportunity, hearing the experiences of veterans firsthand. And we're here just to interact with the kids, explain what we're doing, uh, the importance of the world wars, and just to uh, inter interact with the community and the kids. I think it's pretty cool how the veterans that have served in the war can come and sh come out and share the what they've experienced with us. The goal is the memories made at the museum today will be preserved for a lifetime. Cheryl Bloxham, CTV News, Victoria. A popular historian is putting soldiers' stories to paper for everyone to remember. The book titled Breakout from Juno focuses on the last two months of the Normandy campaign from July 4th to August 21st, 1944. The final Juno series documents the pivotal Allied invasion of Nazi-occupied France from a Canadian perspective. The author, Mark Zelke, describes scenes of soldiers trying to leave the beachhead at Juno, what he calls the most difficult for Canadian soldiers. The author says while researching the book, he heard many gripping stories, including one from a victorious soldier from the Canadian Scottish regiment involved in attacking a village. This is part of an operation called Charnwood, which was a major thrust to try and capture the city. And the Canadian Scottish attacked Kusi. Kusi had been transformed into a, a fortress by the Germans. They had a number of weeks to get ready for these attacks to be coming. So they had transformed all the buildings into, into forts, basically. And so the Canadian Scottish faced a, a very difficult fight there. When they arrived at the village, they hadn't realized that it was completely surrounded by a stone wall. Wall. And so they all not only had to get into the village by climbing over the wall under fire from machine guns and snipers, but then once inside, they had to fight their way through all the different buildings. The historian says the war experience will be forever etched in some people's minds. For him, it was a compelling experience to hear veterans share their side of the story, but also a challenge. It's very emotional uh, work to be doing when you're um, interviewing them and, and, and taping their responses. Um, you know, uh, at times, you know, they'll become, uh, they'll break up, uh, turn tearful and that sort of thing. And it, it's very hard for you doing the interview not to respond in, in kind because it, it is a very uh, emotional experience. If you are interested in learning more, Breakout for Juno is available now in stores. Well, as another Remembrance Day fades into the history books, there are some people on Vancouver Island who took away a lasting memory today. To mark Remembrance Day, a tattoo shop in Victoria was inking a permanent reminder of the sacrifice our men and women in uniform made for our freedom. For a $20 donation to the Legion Poppy Fund, tattoo artists at Urge Tattoos picked up their guns to put on a poppy that will never come off. We had some people started lining up about 7 o'clock this morning, and uh, yeah, we're just trying to tattoo as many people as we possibly can for the rest of the day. All walks of life, all, all the types of people. Uh, a couple of women whose husbands are in the Navy, and a woman who just works for D&D, &D, and we're trying to give military people or the police uh, preference, but uh, sort of first come, first serve. I don't know if you guys have passed away anymore, and I guess friends that uh, are over there now, and it's my way of remembering. A lot of the military guys we tattooed have served in Afghanistan, and uh, a lot of them need uh, some assistance, you know, and their families need assistance, so it's what we can do. There's so many reasons, like, the donation goes to a great cause. Pretty much everybody I know has a grandparent 
that in some way made it possible so we can live in an awesome, one of the awesomest countries in the world, right? Yeah, I've got some family in the past that served for sure. Yeah. My grandfather and my uncle right now, I'm really close to, is in the reserve. I'm proud of it. Why? Yeah. Uh, because I can. Yeah. yeah. If the sacrifices weren't made that were made, this wouldn't even be happening. This wouldn't be an option, so. There you go. <laughs> you can see it.